Global schools shutdowns in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic led teachers all across the world to think about the kind of learning experiences they could offer in this period. While most of us were learning on the go how to do this, some teachers used their previous experience to implement project-based learning in distance settings. Let's hear from them to understand why they felt the PBL approach was particularly suited to a distance learning setting and what other advice they have for us. Project-based learning is definitely an effective method for a remote teaching scenario, as it gives the opportunity to create a real sense of belonging to a community of learners which may be lacking in such a situation. It breaks monotony, vitalizes connections and offers a context for meaningful interactions. It enables learners to stay in touch with friends and peers and feel serene. It also allows students to work together to reach the set goals and make products based on the knowledge acquired. Here are some examples of what my students made with their mates from Tunisia, Jordan and Romanian for the twinning project eTwinpreneurs. And a blog with recipes and videos to show how to make the dishes so that the quarantine could be tastier. Personally, I continued an existing e-twinning project about podcasting and the lockdown was not really a problem for us. Actually, quite the contrary was the case because the students were more flexible and we were not limited by the availability of the computer lab. During the lockdown, the students contacted each other. They wrote the scripts together in transnational groups and finally, they also recorded their podcasts together. They worked independently and we teachers helped them when they needed our support. So based on what we heard, project-based learning seems to be an effective method for a distance learning scenario. Let's now hear from a teacher with a quite practical example of how they implemented PBL during the distance learning period, including what tools were used to help with this. Photos and videos of nature that was healing, which flooded social media, inspired me to get my students to look into this phenomenon. During our lesson via Zoom, we agreed, I suggested we carry out a project, we agreed on the plan and set off. The first assignment was to look for videos and photos and post them individually on the Padlet. Since some of them were fake, the next logical step was to look for the proof and the scientific explanation of this phenomenon. In groups, they shared articles on Google Slides. After they had found reliable resources, we analyzed the content regarding the, the environment status during the lockdown, its causes, uh, what scientists predict would happen when the lockdown was over, and what should be done, what action should be taken in order to keep the trend going. Uh, this was carried out in groups on WhatsApp. And these conclusions, students posted them in the form of a mind map on Coggle. The next logical step was to look for ways of changing our own habits um, and uh, taking some ac actions in, in, uh, in the local community in order to reduce our carbon footprint, that is, our negative impact on the environment. They shared their ideas on what can be done at home, at school, in the neighborhood and the local community on Google Docs. Eventually, they evaluated these lessons on Linoid. Since my 11th graders are educated in environmental protection, this was a great opportunity for them to show me what I already know about the issue. Based on these reflections, we can see that project-based learning offers great opportunities to connect with your students and develop their competencies when working in a distance or blended learning setting. Keep following this course to learn more about how to get ready and try it in your classroom, online or in school.